Hello, and welcome to a new installment of the Institute's Orientation Program. My name is Aurora, and I will be your guide throughout the program. As an artificial intelligence construct specifically created for this purpose, I have an innate understanding of Institute protocol and access to a wide variety of archival data. I do apologize for the delay, but recent directorate mandated security protocols prevented further continuation of the orientation program pending an end to the crisis in the Commonwealth. With a new director installed and the lockdown lifted, I am able to continue these lectures. This series, unlike previous, will be specifically tailored to existing institute personnel rather than new arrivals and geared towards a better understanding of what life on the surface is like, and how best to approach future research on it. Our first topic of discussion, will be the afflicted humans known as ghouls. It should be mentioned first, however, that the term ghouls is not one officially used by bioscience or the SRB. It is a surface colloquialism born out of ignorance of the condition. The official terminology as defined by bioscience for this condition in humans is radiation-induced post-necrosis syndrome. For the purposes of consistency when communicating with surface dwellers, and contextual understanding, ghouls will be used for the duration of this program. A ghoul is, simply put, a human who has undergone a severe dose of radiation. In many cases, this dosage is near lethal and sufferers undergo typical symptoms of severe radiation poisoning, including cellular decay resulting in advanced tissue necrosis. Unlike typical cases however, cellular decay halts at a certain point, and the subject recovers to a functioning state, albeit with altered physiology. Ghouls at this stage are fully articulate and able to perform most physical and cognitive tasks without much issue. Through an as yet not fully understood process, the ghoul becomes immune to further radiation poisoning and indeed all cellular decay is greatly slowed. This results, for all intents and purposes, in near biological immortality. Although in longer lived ghouls there is still noticeable tissue and cellular degeneration, suggesting that their bodies are still going through an aging process, albeit far slower than unaffected humans. This aging process and decay is almost certainly what causes ghouls to, as the surface dwellers would say, go feral. In these ghouls neurological breakdown starts as a form of dementia, and quickly worsens to the point where speech and higher brain functions become non-existent. Ghouls in this stage become incredibly aggressive and will typically attack anyone or anything they come into contact with, excluding other ghouls, including non-feral ones. Feral ghouls are an all too common sight in the Commonwealth and constitute a significant danger to any personnel venturing out on the surface. Due to their tendency to inhabit pre-war locations and especially sites of high radioactivity, such as defunct power plants, they are often encountered by synth scavenger teams. Making these encounters even more dangerous is the fact that feral ghouls tend to gather in packs, and tend to rush any perceived threat together. If a feral ghoul pack is encountered, it is recommended to keep your distance whenever possible and dispatch them from range. If there is time, finding cover, setting up a small fortification or erecting a simple barrier between yourselves and the incoming ghoul pack would be prudent. If none of these are possible to retreat to a location with a natural choke point, which could help limit the number of ghouls that are approaching at once. Ghouls, both feral and otherwise, have been observed and documented as being able to enter a cryptobiotic state when there is a lack of external stimuli, nutritional sustenance, and or within a confined space. Ghouls who've entered this dormant state have their metabolic processes completely halted, and as a result require no nourishment. In the correct conditions, this state can be maintained for many years or even centuries. Much like other aspects of their physiology, this process is not well understood, but further study by bioscience is pending. This concludes our brief introduction to the subject of ghouls as it pertains to the surface. A reminder that for all official documentation and research papers, 
the word ghoul should not be used. Ensuring proper scientific classification of radiation-induced conditions and mutations on the surface is a strict goal of the Bioscience Division. As a member of the Institute, your adherence to this policy is required and appreciated. For further questions regarding today's topic, please submit your queries to Bioscience, or inquire for archival access privileges within your division. Thank you.